Welcome to my channel, Dr. Munshi Nasir Skilton. How are you, my dear learners? In this video, we are going to talk about a smart technique that can help you to publish in a Q1, Q2 journal very quickly. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. My dear learners, the smart element that I am talking about is the specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So, in this particular case, if you look at the specific question that you can answer in your research paper here there is a guideline what exactly do you want to study what is the population or concept for instance the effect of mobile banking on financial inclusion in rural india so that is the specific area that you are looking for then measurable can the outcome be measured very important without the data Without the measurable technique, it is very hard to publish in a very good journal like Q1 and Q2. Especially, they are looking for a new cutting-edge methodology where you can contribute by the contribution with the data set. So, the number of banks, accounts, open, mobile transition, transactions, these are the measurable numbers that you are going to collect. Whether it is the primary data or secondary data. Then, achievable. Is the research realistic given your data, skill and time? For instance, data are collected from World Bank or Indian Bureau of Statistics or any other Bureau of Statistics or any other data sources that you are looking for. If it is not, then you don't have to search for those areas that the data are not available. Then relevancy. Does it address a real gap or problem in your field? For instance, we are talking about financial inclusion is a current development goal, SDG. Very important and burning issue. Remember, my dear learners, burning issue is very, very important. Why? Because contemporary issues are easy to publish in a Q1, Q2 journal. The readers all over the world that are interested to know about these contemporary issues. And finally, we have time bound. Is there a, any specific time period? Very important. You have to mention the study period in your research. Whether you are doing a meta-analysis, systematic review or an empirical study, you need to put the specific time period. Now, let's talk about some publication that I have developed in a couple of years. You can see that the, the paper that recently published is Can Digital Transformation Reduce Government Corruption? A meta-analysis. So, if I look at this paper, you will see that this paper addresses the digitalization can reduce the government corruption. The question mark that I put forward in order to find out an interesting outcome. So, wherever you are putting this type of title, people will hook to your idea and the readers, especially the editor and the reviewers, interested to know the research outcome. So, you can easily put a question title to become more specific about your idea. That's what I am talking about, very specific. Then, if I look at the another one, like factors influencing the consumption of renewable energy in selected ASEAN countries, dynamic panel data analysis. So, you can see that what are the factors. I am talking about the data set, and then I am talking about the area of study. And also, if you look at the data set and everything, if I go to the website, the empirical one that I'm talking about. So, if you look at this data and information from the one that I have published in a research article, by the way, this is a Q2 journal. So, if you look at this, you can see that I already mentioned what are the factors I'm investigating and area of study ASEAN countries and what is the methodology that I'm applying. So, easily a Q1, Q2 journal reviewer can understand that what is inside the research article. And you can see that the data set I have used, secondary data set. And if you look at the information that I designed for this data set, for this research paper, I can use, I am using the measurable um, equations, mathematical equations. Very important. If you put the mathematical equations in any research to formulate the model and formulate the idea, it is always support and enhance the chances for publication in a Q1, Q2 journal. So, it is very important. So, you can see that the panel map model, all the equations are given here, especially for the engineering and life science people. You can easily do that for arts and humanities. That is different, like 
systematic literature review. However, for general perspective, you can use the descriptive statistics and then you can try to investigate those information in your cutting edge, applying cutting edge methodology and finally you can get the results and discussions. This is one of the examples that I am giving you. There are so many ways you can do that. For instance, one of my Q1 journal that I have published recently in 2024, you can see that this paper investigating immigration inflows, GDP productivity and knowledge production in selected OECD countries. Again, you can see that what I am investigating, the in immigration inflows, GDP productivity and knowledge production. So at the very beginning, I am talking about what is my specific factors that I am looking for, which, what is the area and where, what is the methodology or model that I am using. So this is one of the paper, which is a Q1 journal and it has published and you can see that the purpose, design, methodology according to the guideline of this smart technique. Specific, data measurable, achievable, relevant and time period. So this is very important and I have shared with you three of my recent articles that is published recently with the same smart technique in Q2, Q1 journal so that you can take this idea and guideline to publish your next Q1, Q2 publication or your research article in a good journal very easy. So I hope this video is useful for you. I will see you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.